Hello friends, this is Shelly. Thank you for clicking on this video. Um, we are going to make this beautiful twisted knot headband beanie. <laughs> um, it's the second beanie that I have made in this um, in this line. I have another one that's just a, um, called a headband beanie and you can look for that on my, on my uh, channel as well. Um, now because I made this in such dark color, it's hard, like the brim in particular, it's hard to see the actual knot. So I've got several pictures coming up and I've also, also I'm going to show you um, in a different color as well so that you can see it uh, more clearly. But I made the, um, the base of the, the main part of this hat in Craftsmart um, blue ombre. And generally we're used to seeing the color changes going um, up and down vertical. But in this particular pattern, we see them going horizontal. And I think it looks great. Like I am actually very pleased with how it turned out. Um, and the brim of this particular beanie is made with Craft Smart yarn as well in the navy. Um, and that navy color has a little brown fleck in it. So um, it's really, really rich looking. I really, really like it. Okay, so this is the beanie that you see in its full length. Um, but if you um, turn it inside out, and depending on how neatly you do your seam, you can easily do that. You turn it inside out, then you roll up the brim, um, and you have a shorter beanie that hugs your head. And I think it looks like a Downton Abbey hat. <laughs> if you're familiar with that um, show, Downton Abbey, um, they wear beanies that kind of look like they have... Uh, <laughs> have a front like this or they wear hats that look like they have a front like this and that's what it reminds me of here it is again in Bernat premium with the main body being in robin's egg and the brim being in white um, i've gone ahead and taken a couple pictures outside hoping that maybe you could see detail a little bit better but here they are as well um, the one on the left, of course, is the robin's egg in the white. And I have the brim folded up, and so it's a shorter version um, without the pom-pom. However, it does look really, really, really nice with the pom-pom on the shorter version as well. So you have options here. You can you can choose how you want to wear this, this beanie. Really, there's four options. Short, with or without a uh, pom-pom, and long, with or without a pom-pom. Um, and here we go, we have the, the um, one that we're going to make together um, in its full form with, with the pom-pom again. And uh, I always tell you when I make um, beanies that you should blow dry your pom-pom because your, your faux fur pom-poms because it makes them look 100% different. Um, much, much more beautiful. And I did blow dry this one, but then I um, um, let it sit overnight underneath... <laughs> the other hat sitting on top of it and I took these pictures before I realized that I didn't blow dry it again so if you want beautiful beautiful looking pom-poms you make sure you blow dry them on high heat for 10 seconds and you will be amazed at what they look like so for this project I used both of my Addies I used my Addy 46 needle machine um, for the base the body of the beanie and we use the Addy 22 needle machine for the brim now again if you only have centros which is perfectly fine. You can go ahead and use um, your 48 needle central and your 22 needle central and you will have a beautiful product as well. So thanks again my friends for joining me in this tutorial. Um, I hope you have a lot of fun making, um, making these twisted knot headband beanies. All right so we're going to begin with our 46 needle machine. I should have dusted this off for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> it's pretty dusty. I don't know why it gets used all the time, but um, we're going to start with waste yarn. So grab a color of waste yarn um, that's different from your working yarn so you can see it easily. We're gonna go behind that first black, in front and behind and cast on all the way around. Just like this. Okay. And when you get to the end, you should be going in front of that last white needle. Oops, my waist yarn got tangled around that little clamp there. Okay, put that in your yarn feeder and I've got to untangle this little knot that I just acquired. Okay, and we are going to knit a total of seven or eight rows of waist yarn. Whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you do. Okay, I'm gonna do seven rows of waist yarn, just knitting straight like this. And when I get seven rows, I'll see you back. All right, so I'm on my last row of waist yarn. I'm gonna set my counter to zero. 
do that before I get to the end here. I'm going to open my latch. I'm going to put that yarn between the last white and the first black. Then I'm going to grab my working yarn. Now this is a craft smart yarn. It's blue ombre and I already know that it's going to give me some trouble <laughs> because craft smart yarn just does sometimes and this one um this one has given me trouble in the past and i know it but i'm willing to go a little bit slower um for the sake of the prettiness of, of the beanie okay so i'm going to watch as every needle picks up that yarn make sure it goes down into the, that loop it's over the red teeth and the first row isn't quite so much the problem as is the next few rows because it's going down into its own color. So, oh, so far so good. But I'm going to keep knitting till I get 90 rows. Now, also, maybe a nice thing that's the reason why it's being nice to me is because I actually did use my yarn winder and I made this into a little, I don't know if you can see it here just because of the way the camera is, but I made it into a cake. Um, and I have a center pull and it's very easily coming out of that center pull. Um, I know there's going to be no knots in it because I wound it uh, myself. So I know that as I wound it, um, any any knots that were in the center of the ball, I fixed before it, the cake uh, made it. Okay, so I'm going to keep knitting just like this. I'm going to add my tensioner right away. Although this tension seems to be perfect. What's just coming out of the ball, actually. So maybe I won't add it. Sometimes you have to find the right speed and the right tension for the yarn that you're using um, in order for your machine to work properly. Um, so far, I haven't had a lot of grinding of my handle. I think maybe once, but oops, see this one snagged a little bit, so I'm going to stop there. I'm watching as as every stitch passes past that yarn guide so that um, I don't get any tucked stitches there, okay? Um, but sometimes when you find, see how you heard that crank a little bit? If you find the right speed and the right tension for your yarn and it's loosely coming out of your ball, um, then it, you know, it helps that you don't, you don't hear that cranking sound quite so much, that grinding sound. But um, if your machine has to work hard to get the yarn um, to knit up, then you will more often hear that cranking sound happen, okay? So the idea is to find the right speed and the right tension and then you can say also, so, oops, see that? And this one was tucking too. So I am going to go ahead and fix that. I have a video on my channel that shows you how to fix, fix tucked stitches if um, uh, if you acquire them. Now this one, I didn't get too far so I can actually back it up and put it over those red teeth and I didn't even have to fix it, okay? Um, only because I wasn't very far. If I would have been even a half a stitch further, I would have had to fix it like a tucked stitch the next time it came around, okay? So I'm gonna continue going. Watching very carefully, because see, as I told you, this yarn is going to be troublesome for me. It doesn't like me, doesn't like the machine, but that's okay. I'll win this battle, and so will you if you take your time. <laughs> um, and you'll see we'll have a beautiful outcome. Okay, so 90 rows. When I get to about 55 or 60, I'm going to stop so I can roll it up into a donut so I um, don't have it resting on the table and pushing up on my on my project so that I risk dropping it off of those red teeth. If you've not done that before and you're new to Addy Knitting, then once uh, your project starts to touch the table, see me back and the next clip I'll show you um, what you can do with that, okay? Okay, have fun. All right, so you can see that it's starting to touch the table here. So I'm going to go ahead and roll it into a donut because once it starts to get slack on there, then it lifts up on the side here. And you can see how, how if I was to keep going like this, it would pull up on here and then you can risk dropping these little um, loops off the red teeth. And when those little loops come off the red teeth, it will unravel your, your row. So you wanna prevent that. And you also want to um, have a tension that's even around the barrel as you're knitting. So you're going to pick this up Oh, these colors are nice. I had one tucked stitch so far. So if you get a tucked stitch when you're working, I have a video that shows you how to fix a tucked stitch while you're working, okay? So you can go ahead and look that up. But um, there we go. I'm gonna roll it up. And as you keep going, and as it keeps getting longer, you just keep rolling it up. And it gives you even tension along your barrel here as you're knitting and your stitches will be nicer, okay? So just wanted to pop on and show you how to do that if you're new um, and keep going now till you get 90 rows. All right, so I've got my 90 rows and I'm gonna just roll this up so I can, can uh, handle it better when I take it off. I'm gonna open my latch. I cut off the end. I'm gonna put it between the last white and the first black. I'm gonna take my waist yarn. 
I'm going to put it in there because you need waste yarn at the beginning and the end of this project. And I'm going to make sure that that first row catches because with the Craft Smart yarn again, I had to watch every stitch to make sure that it was uh, going down over those red teeth and the needle was picking up the yarn and taking it down through that loop. Okay. And the first row, I'm still working with the Craft Smart yarn, so I'm going to keep a better eye on it. Okay. Now I can go because I know this is Burnett Premium yarn and it works like a charm in my machine. So I'm going to do eight rows of waist yarn. And when I finish that, I will see you back. Alright, so now that I have that done, I will open my latch, put it between the last white, the first black, shut that latch, because if I don't, when I circulate my, cir um, rotate my barrel, it could catch, the needle could catch on this little um, end and break the needle or break the latch, and I don't want that to happen, so make sure you close it. Then you're going to just, ro oopsie, rotate your barrel twice. Just like that, until it lets go. And then you have a beautiful donut that you're going to, um, we're going to work on closing the ends next before we move on to the second part of the project, okay? Um, which will be with our Addy 22 needle or your Centro 22 needle. But for now, grab your crochet hook. Um, I use a 4.5 millimeter hook to close the end. Use whatever you're most comfortable with. with. Um, but I wouldn't go much bigger than a 5.5 or 6, okay? Um, 4.5, uh, 5 millimeter, somewhere in there is the best to use. So grab that and I shall see you back. All right, my sweet friends, we've got our favorite stitch markers. If you are an avid follower of my channel, you know that these are my favorite and hopefully they've become your favorite too. <laughs> okay, we're going to unroll our donut. Okay, we're going to stretch it lengthwise. That's widthwise actually, and lengthwise. This is going to be a unique hat because generally when we're making a beanie and we have color changes like this, um, your changes, when, when you were, are wearing your beanie, your changes are are one on top of each other like that. But this one is going to be um, this way. So our color changes are going to, going to go a different direction than what we're normally used to seeing. And it's going to be beautiful. I think you're going to really like it. Okay, so take your one end. And this is the end of my yarn of my project. This was where I ended off because this comes off easily so that you, we know that's the end of our work. So we're going to, if, if you don't know how to do this, then grab the end of your work so that you can um, see where these stitches are when I show you, okay? So take your waist yarn and the loop that that's coming out of, that's this blue one here, I'm going to put my first stitch marker. It'll be my first stitch. Then to the left of it, you'll see this loop, these two that are right one on top of each other, just like this. You're going to take the top one. Now that top one is attached to this yarn okay so you pull on that that's the one you're going to go in that's number 46. we know there's 46 stitches across we're going to find stitch 23 and 24 do not forget to put your yarn ends in between your two bobby pins so that you don't sew them into your work okay we want to go to the exact opposite side so we, to do that we need to find stitch 23 and 24 so where my first bobby pin is i'm going to count that as one then all these little loops are stitches rows okay one two three four Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, and twenty-four. So I know that these two are my very side stitches. I'm going to put my hook under twenty-four. Then I'm going to put it under twenty-three. Pick up twenty-three and put it through that. I've just worked two stitches because we count the one that was on our hook. Now that was two. And the reason why we need to count is because we want to make sure we work all 46 stitches. Because if you miss one of these little loops, then when you take your waist yarn off, your row's going to unravel. Okay, so that's two. Go down to the bottom, three. Up to the top, that's four. Down to the bottom, five. Top, six. Seven. Back and forth like that. Nine. Ten. Eleven. Until you get to the end and I'll see you there. 12, 13, 14. All right, so I've counted 44. This will always be 45. So if when you get to this bottom bobby pin, if it's not 45, you've missed a stitch somewhere, okay? So then we're gonna pick up 45, put it through, and this one is always 46. And you're gonna work that then you're going to yarn over with your with your working yarn, put it through that loop, 
oops, pull it and tighten it. Then this waist yarn is easy to pull off. You're just gonna pull it off. I'm gonna wind it up as I pull it off because I'm gonna reuse it, okay? But again, at the end of your work, it comes off very, very, very easily. Okay, so go ahead, take that off, wind it up if you're gonna use it again or throw it in the garbage, <laughs> whatever you're fancy, and then see me back and we'll close up the other end. All right, so this other end, which is the beginning of your project, when you take your tail of your waist yarn and you pull on it, you can see this is, if I was to take this out here, the stitch that it's going through, see as I pull that, that stitch that it's going through is my first stitch. That's where I'm gonna put my first bobby pin. Then I'm gonna to go to the left of it. And when you go look to the left of it, you will see these two stitches, okay? Your working yarn is right beside that one that you're going to, that you're going to um, put your bobby pin in. So it's right to the left, Ay -ay -ay. right to the left, these two right there, you're gonna take the top one and your working yarn is right beside it. Both of them are coming out of that same stitch there, okay? And we're going to put your bobby pin there. Then you're gonna count around, make sure your ends are between the bobby pins and the outside of your work. You're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna count around to, because there's 46, you're gonna count around to 23 and 24. Put your hook under 24 and then start working the same way you did before. And when you get that closed up, I'll show you how you remove your waist yarn. All right, so to remove the waist yarn at the beginning of your project, you want to roll that up and you see that very first row and you see how if I rock it like that, you see it's going through a stitch. That's how you know that's the top row. Sometimes it's easy to grab the second row. You wanna make sure you grab the top row. This is the end where my this is the end where my waist yarn is in, so I'm just gonna go a quarter way around or so. I'm gonna pinch that stitch to the left, then I'm gonna pull that top row out. Then I'm gonna go on down the row 10 or 12 stitches, roll it up so until I know I'm at that top row. You see when you pull it, you can get through that very top stitch, pinch the stitch, pull it out. Turn your work, do it again. You have to pull out that very first row. If by mistake you grab the second row, you're gonna make a big knot and then you then you have to basically cut it off, okay? <laughs> so here's the last one. Pinching and pulling. Then once that first rows out, voila, comes off like a dream, okay? There is another way to do this. So you just pull out one row, one, um, row and then the whole thing comes off, but then you have to unwind it anyways and roll it up. So I actually will, <laughs> will argue the fact that it's faster. <laughs> It might be faster to initially get the yarn off, but it's in the end, it's not, I don't think it's faster because you still have to unwind it and roll it up. Um, and so if you do it the, um, the way I just showed you and um, you make sure you're on the top row, it'll work every time. Okay, so there we go. That's done. So now I have my piece that we are going to use for the beanie. I love all those colors and I think this is going to be absolutely gorgeous. Um, our eyes are used to seeing, um, now I can't even visualize it, seeing our color change is going horizontally when they're on a beanie because this this would be the top of the beanie and these are horizontal but this time we're going to see them vertically um, and it's going to be great so i'm going to choose a color that's in here i haven't decided which one yet i'll surprise you as soon as i uh, come on for the next clip clip i'm going to choose um one of these colors uh for the next part so i want you to set up your addy 22 get um another color that you want for the brim and uh meet me back all right, so I have my 22 needle machine set up and we are going to go ahead and do the exact same thing we just did on our 46 needle machine or a 48 if you have a centro, okay? And we're going to start with waste yarn. So I am going to, I'm not gonna, gonna do this on, on camera because it's exactly the same thing as what we just did, um, except for I'm using a different yarn. I'm going to use, I found this Craft Smart Navy in my drawer. It's got a little brown fleck. Well, you, you won't be able well, just very slightly a little brown flex through but it's called navy and again it's a craft smart yarn you know the funny thing is is that um i'll talk to you as i'm doing this the funny thing is um in the winter time when it's so dry well it's not funny it's because it's dry your air is dry sometimes you'll have a hard time with yarns that if you put away and you try in the summer when it's more humid will work fine and so 
that yarn that I just used in my 46 um, gave me big, big trouble in the winter time. And so now I just tried it. Now we have one tuck stitch in 90 rows and that to me is phenomenal. So um, I'm going to try this other Craft Smart yarn um, and I'm going to try to make use of it. So um, you, you never not use it. You just wait for the prime time or wait till you have patience to go slower in your machine. So I'm going to set my counter to zero. I'm going to do 90 rows of this um, solid color that I'm choosing. And then I'm going to do waste yarn again. Um, and then I'm going to remove my project. I'm going to close up both ends, just like what we did with our last piece. And when I have both ends closed up, I'm going to come back and see you. And we're going to do something special with this one. Okay. Oh, with both of them, actually. <laughs> All right, so I've got both my ends done on both pieces. Now I'm gonna take this narrow piece, the 22 needle one, and I'm going to find the edge. And I'm going to actually start on the right side. <clears throat> and I'm going to find it so that um, I, when I put my little thing in there, <laughs> my safety pin in there, you'll see that the wide part of the V is down here and the point of the stitch is down here. So it's like this, okay? So the wide part, of the stitch is going to the left and I'm going to find that whole row and I'm going to try to smooth it out okay just because we're going to need to count stitches while I'm doing this we have 96 stitches in this um, piece we need to find the very center stitch of this piece so Sorry, we have 95 stitches in this piece. I knew as I was saying it, it didn't sound right. We have 95 stitches in this piece. We need to find the very center one. So um, half of 90, 95 would be 47, would be 94. And then that extra one, so um, 48 would be the middle one. Because then the 48 stitch, then there'll be 47 on one side, 47 on the other side. And that makes 95. So what we're going to do is we're going to... Start from the very top here. We're gonna count. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, thirty, three, one, three, two, five, three, six, seven, three, three, nine, forty, forty-one, forty-two, forty three, forty four, forty five, forty six, forty seven, and forty-eight, right there. Okay? So that's my forty-eight stitch. So I know, I mean, you could fold it in half and get an approximate, um, but I want my seam to be exactly in the center of the back of my, of my beanie. So that's why I am going to be more accurate. I'm going to find the 48th stitch. I'm going to put my stitch marker in there to mark it. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take my, um, my other piece and I'm going to grab um, a needle with some yarn on it and we are going to attach. So this is is going to be part of the center of my back. So both of these both of these edges, when we sew them together, are the center of the back of the beanie. So the center of the back will be where this safety pin is, okay? So we're going to go ahead. I know that's the 48th stitch, so I'm going to go ahead into that 47th. Let me just take that out. Actually, I'm gonna go into the 48th. I'm going to pick up two you can go into the 47th or the 48th, doesn't matter. You can pick up the 48th stitch on the other end. Oops, <laughs> on the other end, but I'll just pick it up here. Hope that's where it was. 48 and 47, leave a tail, okay? Then we're going to begin joining, making sure that the wide part of the V is also going down in the right, same direction, okay? So I'm gonna attach that. You can't see very well with this navy because it's dark, so my Apologies to you. I, I hope that it's it's okay. Okay, and then up in here is that very small stitch. Don't forget this one here. Okay, you got to go in there. Take those two. The first two. Then we're going to work our way down. We're going to pick up the next two. Where you, oh. <laughs> where you came out here, you're going to go in and you're going to pick up two bars. Just like that. Pull it through gonna catch on the corner of my table okay there we go dark yarn is always so hard to videotape because it's so hard to see but it's really the only color I wanted for this so that I had that was close enough to go with it okay so now from there I'm gonna go across I'm gonna pick up two bars 
like that. This is the invisible join. Then where I came out on this side, I'm going to go in. I'm going to pick up two. And where I came out, I'm going to go in. I'm going to stay on that same row. Pick up two. Pick up two on the other side, just like that. I'm going to do that quite a ways down before I, before I pull it to tighten it, okay? And I'm going to just continue here. Going in where I came out. And going in here. Okay. Picking up two bars, going all the way down. Oops. Until we get about 12 stitches or so from the end. So when you follow that all the way down, you're going to look at the end here and we need to leave a space open. So you're going to, and this one doesn't have to be ex exact, um, but you just need to leave yourself about a 12 stitch space. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12 or 13, somewhere in there. You're going to, um, I'm going to put this in the 13th stitch. We're going to work up to that 13th stitch and when I get there, um, I'll, I'll stop there as well, but you're going to keep going um, and we're going to do something different with this, okay? Now I'm going to just now take both ends of this and I'm going to magically pull it and look at that, okay? That just seams it up so nice and beautifully. All right, so you're going to continue on until you get to your marked space, that bobby pin. And when you get there, I'll see you back, okay? Actually, I'm almost there. You're probably gonna beat me there. <laughs> uh, so, you just see me back when you get there and then we will um, we'll move on, okay? Okay, so in picking up two bars, um, there's one more here. Um, before this one where I marked off. So I'm just going to leave that. I'm just going to pull this out. We're going to tighten this up just like that. I'm actually going to grab this other end um, like that because I find it just uh, makes it nicer. Okay. And that is um, what we've got for one side. Now we're going to turn around and finish the other side. All right. So just quickly leave, take your yarn out of your needle and leave it hanging there because we're going to use it to sew this part. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll use that later. So don't trim it off. Don't, um, do anything with it. Just leave it just like that for now. Now you're going to take your ed edge of your other piece of your wide piece. You're going to fold it over. We know that this is the center, um, where we counted our to, to 48, right? So we're going to now take our yarn. If it's not long enough, I'm going to have to attach, attach one. I'm going to have to attach one, but I'm going to show you what I'm going to do. I'm going to just flip this over like this. Okay. Just like this, because this is going to be the middle back, right? And so I'm going to find that row that I was following along. And because I'm going the opposite direction, we're going to have the pointy part of the, of the stitch going that way. And that helps me stay on the same row that I was um, because this row here, the wide part of the V, we trail it down, trail it down, stay on the same row, trail it all the way down. Then you're going to flip this over. This is the same row that we were working on. Okay. This row right here, but because we folded it over, we've got the, the, point of the V facing down. I, I don't ever work on it on that way, but um, for this project, we're going to have to, and it's not going to, it's, it's going to be okay. But for this side, um, it's the same thing because we're going the opposite direction. We have the point. This is where it was coming out. This was the 48th stitch. So I'm going to pick up at the top here and I'm going to pick up two stitches. We will sew down the other side a little bit later. Then I'm going to go into the stitch where it's coming out and I'm going to pick up two bars. Okay, just like so. I'm going to go into that stitch that I'm coming out, pick up two bars. Now again, I um, I have too short of a piece of yarn here, so I'm going to end up having to, to attach one, okay? Um, and I'll, I'll do that. Before I run out too much, I'll just tie a knot on it and then I'll just continue working, okay? But we're going to continue on in that manner, picking up two on each side. 
just like that all the way down following that same row that we were following before okay come on get in there see it's harder to do it when the v is pointing down that's why i always say have your v the other way but you have to endure it this time right <laughs> and then you're going to pull that and then that's where we're going to sew that together from the wrong side but i'm going to go ahead and attach yarn and i'm going to finish sewing this around following that same row leaving the same amount here so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve put it in my thirteenth one I'm going to sew up to there, attach it, sewing it up to there. Okay. And then when I'm done that, I'll see you back. All right. So when you're done that, it should look a bit like this. And luckily for me with this patterning, the way it worked out, <laughs> this is, is sitting right in the middle of this stripe. So that looks really nice. You're risking it when you use a stripe. Um, but I wanted to use that yarn and see what it looked like. So when this is all said and done, it's going to be beautiful. Um, but we're going to just um, leave this for right now. I'm going to cut these just a little bit shorter. And we're going to leave this. This is our front. We're going to leave it. We're going to flip this around to the back. Okay. And this is the right um, side. So we're going to turn this inside out. Well, you got to determine which you want to be the right side. So I'm going to just flip it inside out. Because either side looks the same, really. Um, but it's it's uh, when we do the next part. So actually take a look at your piece and see which one, which side you like better. Because sometimes they're different in the sense that you might have a loose roll or whatever on one side, okay? And not on the other. Like, see for this one, look how beautiful, look how beautiful this patterning looks here. If I switch it on the inside or the other side, although it's the same color, sorry, it's just awkward to work with. Although it's the same color, you can see where my jaunt is here for the color change. I noticed that right away with my eye. So I'm gonna have this be the inside. So I'm gonna leave it like this, okay? I'm gonna have this be the inside, then I'm gonna go up to this part here and because these are both too short to sew in, I'm going to hide them. And I just put that on my needle. I'm going to weave it in and out there. Just like that. And I'm not going to have to go back with it because I'm going to be sewing right over top of it. So it'll reinforce it. I'm going to do the same with this one. Cut it off. I'm going to grab another piece of yarn and I'm going to thread my um, my needle and we're going to start sewing from this end and go up. So grab some yarn, put it on your needle and I'll see you back. Let me just add, when you grab your yarn, make it a little bit longer than um, you would think because we're going to use that same piece to gather at the top here um, to close our top. But for now, we're going to kind of just attach it right at the very bottom there. Okay gonna bring it up I'm gonna tie a knot here just a basic knot just like this I will hide this in to the same color there or in amongst here however you want to do it, it's okay then I'm going to go into the piece this always catches on the corner of my table just like that come back around go into the next stitch Go back around and that's how I'm going to still sew it all the way across going underneath that first row and into that second side okay we're going to close our beanie shut in the back there okay don't be afraid to go a little bit deeper um, the last hat I made I just took the very top here the very top two bars and uh, I just found that I needed to um, redo it and go a little bit a little bit deeper um, just so that the seam was nicer when you turned it inside out. So just keep that in mind, okay? And then I'm going to continue this all the way up. Okay, and when I get to the top, I'm gonna tie it off in a knot and then I'm gonna just leave this hang, leave this yarn end hanging. We're not gonna gather the, the top yet. We're gonna gather that after we're finished the front. So you go ahead and continue sewing this up Till you get to the top, knot it off, and then see me back. All right, so now that you have that all sewn up and it's looking great, you're gonna go back to this other side, okay? 
we're going to take, and we still have the wrong side facing, we're going to leave these two yarn ends alone because we're going to use it to sew up later. But we're going to fold this in half, just like we do the twisted headband. Fold this other one in half, just like that. We're going to pop one inside the other. So you got one going like this and one going like this. Tuck that into the corner. Best you can. You're going to take the yarn that you just put on your needle, leave a strand so you can tie a knot. Tie it off, it's easier that way. And you're going to just go through all the layers. And you're going to sew it. Sometimes it's hard to catch that one layer, but we're gonna just pick up all four and bring it through. I'm gonna knot this off later, okay? Get it out of my way. Go back in. And pull that tight. So this one I wanna come fairly close up to the top as, as I can, because I don't want a big bulge there. Um, and I don't wanna take away too much from the length, I, but I do want the look. Okay, so I'm picking up that one. There we go. Pulling on that. And four. Pulling on that. Then I'm just going to go into this very corner, into that corner. I'm going to tie it off. Then I'm just going to turn it and see if I've got it all, which I do. Looks perfect. Okay, so now I'm going to tie this off. Don't tie a really big knot because you'll feel that on your head then. Just a nice, even knot. Take that yarn end, hide it in, snip it off. Okay, I'm going to do the same for this one and then I'll see you back. All right, so that's the right side. This is still the wrong side. We've got to finish closing it. No, don't we? So I'm going to take the one side here. If this goes all the way across, then I can use this then to tie it off. But I'm going to then put it back up on its side. Find that same roll that I was working on. Okay. And I'm going to go in where I came out. Pick up two. In where I went out here. Pick up two. Pick up two. Pick up two all the way across. It's a little tricky when you get to the knot, so stick with me and I shall show you what we're gonna do. Okay, but I'm staying on that same row. There we go, coming up to the middle. Okay, so I'm gonna take two. Then you'll see I'm at my crisscross here. So I'm going to go in, pick up one here. Then I'm going to go across and I'm going to pick up one there. Okay. Then I'm going to repeat. Go into here, take two. I'm going to go there and pick up two. I'm going to pull on this to tighten. So I have a little bit longer yarn end here. I'm going to go across. Where is my row? Let's just see. There it is. Mm. There we go. Right there. Pick up two. Sometimes it's a little tricky to see at the end here, but you can do it. Pick up two. up two and pick up two and you might have a little extra here just because of that knot didn't work out so all I'm going to do is I'm going to go in where I came out I'm going to just pick up that one again and then I'm going to pick up two here then there was one left pick that up you just make it work um it's just because you had that you you messed up your row count when you um put your knot on there but 
Then you're going to pull that to tighten just like that. Okay. Then we're going to tie off. Make sure that this little section right here is, is nice and um, that we've caught it. So I'm going to just tie a knot there and then I'm going to tie this again. Tie a knot. I'm going to hide my ends and then I'll see you back. All right, so I have my ends all hidden. And uh, this is the back. Can't wait to see the front. But you're going to have to wait just a little bit longer. We're going to flip it around to the back. And I hid that um, end that was there. But we're going to go ahead and we're going to thread our needle with this piece that was left. Okay. And we are going to smooth this out from the inside as well, just like that. So we have the top brim nice and crisp okay we don't want it all gathered on the inside we want just a nice crisp top here okay then we're going to take our needle and we're going to weave it in and out of that top row all the way around okay so miss a stitch pick up a stitch miss a stitch pick up a stitch all the way around if you miss two and you pick up one or whatever, that's okay. <laughs> okay, but we're gonna, but I just miss a stitch and pick up a stitch all the way around. Just like that on that very top row. Then I'm gonna take a second and just smooth it out again from the inside as well, just because I wanna make sure that I'm not gonna have any funny, awkward gathering. Then I'm going to continue all the way around. Okay, so go ahead and continue doing that all the way around until you get to the where you started, okay? You know, it it will be smooth because you're going to stay on that same row. You're not you're not uh, when you I just popped back on because you're not going to turn this and then go to a different row. You're going to stay on this same row that you smoothed out in the beginning, and then it's all going to work out just the way it's supposed to. We are almost done, so I'm just going to stay with you here, okay? How was your day? You had a good day? How's your evening? <laughs> uh, you can let me know in the comments then. I really am talking to you. Okay. Then you're going to pull this. Careful not to snap it. And as you do so, I always smooth out the top again. I don't want to have any extra gathering that I don't need. Okay. Pull, 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 pull. Just like that. Then, once that's all smoothed out, I'm going to take my needle and I'm just going to go around the top just like this. Just like we do. We always go around the first row when we're doing our beanies. Um, I'm going to leave a tiny wee hole there, just like I showed you on the cancel cap. Now, where is my... I'm going to put a little hook in there, okay? A smaller one, because I want to have a little hole so that I can use my... my um, pompkins to get my pom my removable pom-pom in there. That's what I use. And so um, if you didn't see my cancer cap uh, video, you'll probably say, what are you talking about? And you will see in one second, okay? So I'm going to go around that. I need a little hole opening. But you know what? At the same time, I can go a little bit tighter. Now that I got in there, I got a general idea, but I can go a little bit tighter. And if I'm not going to have a pom-pom on this beanie, um, the hole is still small enough that uh, you can wear it both ways and it'll look fine, okay? Just have a tiny wee hole there. Now I'm going to tie this off. Like that. I'm going to hide my end. I'm going to grab a pom-pom and a pumpkin <laughs> and uh, show you what I do next, okay? All right, I grabbed my pom-poms. But I'm going to turn this beautiful piece right side out. And there we have it. Isn't that beautiful? <laughs> I love it. Now, you don't even need a pom-pom on this beanie. This particular beanie looks so English. Like it just is reminding me of an English tea party. You can wear it without a pom-pom. Um, or you can put a pom-pom on it. Um, either way is absolutely beautiful. If you want a really short beanie that's really close to your head with no overhang turn it inside out i mean turn your inside out well essentially this is inside out but turn this up and you'll have a 
one that just snugs to your head, but you still got the beautiful look, okay? Um, so two in one, really. Um, so I'm going to show you how to use this pumpkin, just for those of you who have never used them. I don't have, like, I guess that does work because white would have been too too stark, but I don't um, don't have any white ones left, any pom poms left. But this is a pumpkin. Renda, from, who is a member of this channel and a member of my Facebook group, um, her and her brother Sam created these and they're available to you. I'll put the link down below. And uh, if you want to reach out to her, uh, you you can do that in regards to purchasing some of these. But these are called pumpkins. And you'll see on one side, it's got a little bit of um of a more um, rough edge. And you want to make sure that that goes close to the pom-pom when you put it on so that when it goes, when it opens up on the hat, then then uh, it grabs the, the fibers of the hat and stays on. But you're going to take your pom-pom. You're going to take your pom pom pumpkin. That's the rough side. I'm going to put it down. I'm going to put that over top, just like that. And I'm going to wind this around. Okay, wind this around three times is all you need to do around your pumpkin, just like pumpkin, just like that. Okay, then you're going to put this in half and it springs back on me all the time, which is excellent because then you know it's going to spring into your hat and it's going to stay in place. Okay, I'm going to hold. <laughs> You try to do this on camera. I'm going to pinch that in half like that. And I'm going to stick it in that little hole. Okay. Grab it from the inside. Pull it up. And you can put your pom-pom on. You can wind that around one more time if you want. But then it springs open. And that rough side is against the hat. So it stays like that. And then there you have your pom-pom. I love the pumpkins. I think they're genius. A black would have been too too black. I'm going to throw that back over there. I think that's the right color because it matches that side there. If I was to do a pom-pom, that's the color that I would use. But for this particular hat, the twisted um, knot hat, I think it's best without a pom Well, either way, you decide. <laughs> okay, so there you have it, my friends. So there you have it, my friends. I hope you enjoyed making this twisted knot headband beanie. <laughs> um, I would love to see the different color choices that you have used uh, and combinations that you have used to make this beanie. So please head over to my Facebook group, Koala Knits and Knacks, and post your makes. We would all love to see them, and we'd love to have you a part of that group. And don't forget to hit that like button. <laughs> Thanks again, my friends. Have a fabulous day.